you know, I think as we get closer, guys, you know, and you know, the the you know, we start hearing the whistles because coaches are getting guys in drills and, and getting them back in the flow of things. Um, you know, we, we, for Michigan, what, what I really want to see is I, I hope you know, you know, guys get back on campus and and they they get back locked in. Um, that based on everything that's happened this off season, that uh, Harbaugh and it's and I. And, and mind you, we didn't even bring up the coaching, the, the change in coaching. You know, you lost both your offensive and defensive coordinator, right? Mm-hmm. So e- even there, there's been a lot of shakeup. So, you know, they got they've had a lot of changes, some distractions, and I, I just really hope because the talent is there to be successful this year, along with a week schedule initially. Um, I just really hope they're able to get guys focused and uh, you know get them ready for, I think, a very important season. Yeah, I, I think they're the benefit, the schedule benefits them greatly. Uh, you get to figure out at least some things without having that initial tough test. Um, so I, I think for them, they have that benefit, and that's definitely working in their favor. But what the the tough part is once it once it really starts, it it's it's rolling. So I think in their toughest. I think six games that they have i mean they're you know you get basically a week in between some of those games but um you know Iowa's gonna be probably that first big test depending on what maryland looks like but it's um yeah and according to dre that's an impossible place to win so i'm really you know, nervous it's really scared disrespecting them, man. like we've had no. enough people outside my we've had enough people outside myself that have said that playing at iowa it is it, it is no no picnic. So I'm just saying you need to stop disrespecting them. Well, like I said, you you said there's no way to win there, and my argument I never is said that. I said if you are the better there, team, but... go in there and perform and beat them and go home. That do that, do that. You are the better team almost every weekend. So how about you leave Tuscaloosa and go somewhere past the the, the Mississippi River? How about that? Why do they need to? Because it's good for the sport. Stop being spoiled and, and, and just staying down there. And, and like, no, like you don't do think do playing Florida State in I a neutral Alabama site go down. We want to see Alabama go down. We get they did go down. They lost twice last year, two go times. Same Columbus. number as Michigan. And I can hate watch you both. Go play who? Go up to Columbus, and I can hate watch you both. Uh, I think that'll be happening. In a couple yeah, years, well, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, well, we play please. each other. We that's happened in the last what two playoffs? We've played yeah. Ohio so State. Know. What eight years? Yeah. So I mean, Alabama played Florida State in the neutral site. They were ranked number one at the time. Uh, played you, Wisconsin. You destroyed, you destroyed can, the only Francois career. Oh my yeah, goodness, that, that was pretty that. unfortunate. That knee injury. Um, Man, you yeah, Louisville, here, Duke, take off. You literally ended Florida State's Dude. run. That, that was it. The minute that the Bionic Francois broke it, that was it. Well, yeah, it he had, that was a pretty bad knee injury, too. I think it's yeah, a patella like, tendon. I, I can defend these Bama neutral site games to a certain extent, even though I think they should be playing on somebody else's campus. Uh, I can defend them to a certain extent because it's been it's been Clemson, Virginia Tech, Michigan, Wisconsin, Florida State. But that, that back-to-back Duke, Louisville <laughs> – I and, and when people come back when I've when I've trashed Bam and said, come on, you're better mm-hmm. than that. You, you don't schedule Duke in Atlanta and, and Louisville the next year. They've said, Well, you don't know how good these teams are gonna be in five years. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you know, Duke's gonna suck. You do honestly know. here's what I, I do truly wonder is and, and maybe I already have the answer. I wonder how many teams would be willing to schedule Alabama. You know what I mean? Like out of conference, like some team, some schools probably are like, no, we're good. But what I what I would say is based on, you know, what's coming the next six to seven years, like there there's some like some are truly willing to do it because obviously they're starting to, you know, load that up on the schedule. And um, and I, I think part of that transition, because it was like we mentioned, all neutral site since Nick Saban has been there. And now it seems to be trending towards home and home. My guess, and this is just a guess, is that is going to coincide with the expansion of the playoff and to where now I I think uh, your actual strength of schedule is going to matter. So in a way, you know, my me winning at Wisconsin is going to be much better than 
a neutral site Louisville or neutral site Duke. Um, so that's that's my thought on it. I could be completely off and wrong, and maybe you know they just ended contracts with these these places. But I that's my guess of of why that transition is coming. I would I just say, want to see, what's that, Dre? I was gonna say I, I just want to see Alabama and, and Michigan go out to play at USC. I I, I want to see that that stuff's cool. Like that those are things I look forward to, man. You know, like, uh, like the, that, that, that gets, that gets you excited. You know, like, I, you know, you know, n- not Duke, Alabama. What was that? The Chick-fil-A stadium, wherever it's called in Atlanta. You know, you know it's like, okay, Mercedes Benz, wherever it's called. It's just like, all right, great. You know, like, it, 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 and then poor ABC, you know, they try to go out there and they try to, you know, pump it up. Like, Hey, you know, like we know how this is, how this is about to go. You know, you guys to try to pump it up all you want to do. You look cute stories on Duke and some players and how they prepare for this game all summer. It's not going to matter. Yes. Yeah. I don't have an issue with Alabama playing Duke. It's Alabama playing Duke as their featured non-conference game. Yeah. Like, you know, not and, a great year. The NFL stadium and it's like, yeah, exactly what Gray's <laughs> saying. It's like, this is supposed to be like, <laughs> um, now I might be wrong here, but I would guess if college football nation, if every college football fan was polled, the series that we just talked about a few minutes ago, Alabama, Ohio State, I think that that would be the one that people would want to see the most. I agree. So it's it's on this books, home and home. I think it would be fantastic, you know. Um, I'm, I mean, honestly, I, I, I hate you, not not you in, in, in individually, but, you know, I, I hate both your schools. Uh, but so I will be hate watching that game. Uh, but, you know, hey, I hope and I'm, I'm just per- me personally. And I know a lot of Michigan fans. I'm just hoping that we can, like, kind of take another great season and get to that level where we can be like I, I want to be able to watch that game and be like, you know what? All right. This is going to have huge implications on where they are compared to us in our race to the college football playoff, right? I'm just hoping that this lack of momentum and distractions is not going to cause this program to fall off. And when I say fall <laughs> off, I'm not talking about to Brady Hope type standards. I'm talking about, you know, eight wins, you know, maybe getting on. No, because of the lack of recruiting. No, we, we need to keep this going. So I, I'm, I was spoiled by last year and I want more. I want more. <laughs> Oh, someone asked, when is the last time that Alabama played a game on the West Coast? Like, you realize there's only a couple schools on the West Coast, but uh, someone else had put, Mark probably knows. They played a home-and-home with UCLA about five years before before Saban started, like 02, 03 in that range. That is incredible knowledge, Mark. That is incredible. Wow. I'm not shocked that's that you say but granted, it's not. It's no. It's see, here's the problem. It's like it's not like there was a huge draw to play a West Coast team that would have mattered. Now I do believe in Lincoln Riley now being at USC. Uh, now and granted, now we did see USC in Alabama, but it was um, neutral site, right? Correct. Yep, yeah. that was a uh, Jalen Hurts freshman year. Yes, fifty-two to ten. Sam Darnold, the USC starter. No, Lincoln. um, Sam no, Darnold Sam hadn't Brown. been the the was it the starter at that time? It was someone else, Jake Bur- not Browning. Oh, who was it? I can't remember who started that game. But Sam oh, Darnold, I think, was after twenty. Yeah, that's Ooh. right. Neither neither team. It was <clears throat> it was uh, Blake Barnett, right? Alabama, and it was uh, it was oh, shoot. Uh, Max Brown, I believe, was the starter. For, I think you're right. I believe. Uh, and wow, then uh, Darnold took over for him, after, I think, after that game, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, we didn't we didn't get a chance to uh, to see Sam Darnold. I'm sure he would have scored 50 points on us and, and probably beat Alabama. So, Hey, man, after that Penn State game at the Rose Bowl, people thought that kid was about – I mean, he, he, look – you know, he had a he, he he didn't finish his career the way we thought he was going to finish it. But you know, whatever. Like the point is, it's a lot to be excited for, guys. We're we're you know, um, at the end of the day, you you can, obviously, guys, you can see by the enthusiasm in our conversation that you know we all are fans of our particular schools, but we're more than anything, we're college football fans. And uh, what I think we all want is to see competitive games. We want to see. Games that matter, you know, games that when, you know, there's nothing more exciting, especially for a prime time slot 
where a game has legitimate uh, playoff uh, implications. And that's the beauty of college football because you can get that week one. You're going to get that week one with Notre Dame versus Ohio State. You know, having one loss is a huge deal because you can't have another one, generally speaking. Um, so that's why I think like scheduling is so important and it, 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 it makes for much CTV. You know, when you're watching Alabama Duke at 3.30, you're like, okay, this literally is a waste of time. I'm just watching to see how good or Alabama versus even Miami. I thought, you know, I thought Miami might be a better test than they were. <laughs> but, I you saying, know. I've got a Miami channel, as you guys know, and it was funny yeah. just leading into that game because I was trying to be kind, but I was kind of <laughs> dropping hints that. <laughs> Yeah, it, dear King, man. Oh, that was uh, that was that's another QB fall from grace.